In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at arrays and particularly removing duplicates. In other words, we will have an array that contains lots of values and those values could be duplicated, could occur more than once within the array. And what we want to do is to create some sort of array which contains unique values of that array. In other words, all the duplicates have been removed. And in order to do that, we need to have a couple of steps for our algorithm. So let's go through those steps. The first step is we're going to have a loop that starts from the first element in our array to the second last element. Now that second last element is very important. I'll explain later why we don't go to the last element. But we're going to check each and every element using this first loop. We're going to be checking that first element with every other value in the rest of the array that occurs after it. So if we check that and we find that there are no duplicates of that first element, so if we check that first element with the rest of the array, there's no more duplicates of that element, then we are going to add that element to a brand new array. You can call it array without duplicates, whatever you want to call it, but we are basically creating a brand new array. That way we do not lose the original data in the initial array. So we will do that with each and every element up until the second last element. When we get to the final element, and now that's why we only go to the second last element with our initial loop. When we get to the final element, there is nothing for us to check with the rest of the array because it is the last element. So that element will always be unique. So we will add that to our unique array, our array with no duplicates. Before we get to the code, let's just have a look at an example. So here we have our main array. As you can see, there are six items in the array. And as you can see, there are duplicates. There's two ones and there's two threes. The two and the four are unique. So we're going to start off with our initial array, which starts from the first element and goes to the second last element. So that's our initial loop, which we will see by the red block that appears. So starting with the first element, we are now going to compare that value that's at position 1 in the array, which is the value 1. We're going to be comparing it with the rest of the array, which is the values in position 2 to 6. This will be our second loop that's within the initial loop. So we will go, well, let's start with the first one. Are 1 and 3 the same? No, they're not. What we are doing is we're looking for a value that is the same as that value in the red block, as the first value. 2 and 1 are not the same. When I get to the fourth element in the array, you'll see that they are both 1s. We have found a duplicate. So all we do when we find a duplicate is we stop looking and we move to the next element in the array. We don't do anything with it. We found a duplicate. That's not what we want. So now we move to the second element in the array, which is our initial loop, and it's going to be looking, comparing itself with the rest of the array. We, we've already done the first element, so we do not need to look at it anymore. We're now going to look with the rest of the array, which is values 3 to 6, at position 3 to 6, so the 2, the 1, the 4, and the 3. So we're going to check that second element with the rest of the array. So, I check there, a 3 and a 2, no, that's not a duplicate. A 3 and a 1, not a duplicate. A 3 and a 4, not a duplicate. Ah, when we get to that final value in the array, you can see that there are two 3s. That is a duplicate. So, that position 2, that value number 3, that is a duplicate. So, we will stop looking any further. We won't do anything with that value. We now move to the third element in the array and check that with the rest of the array. And as you can see, there's no 2 at position 4, there's no 2 at position 5, and there's no 2 at position 6. We have reached the end of the rest of the array, and we have found no duplicate. Now, this is when we want to do something. We've realized that the 2 is unique, and so therefore we want to add it to a brand new array. So we put it at position 1 in this new array, which you can call without duplicates, array without duplicates, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so we have found our first unique value. Now we move to position 4. Now, I know that there was originally a 1 in the array, but we've passed that. We've now come to the last occurrence of the 1. Now, if I check this 1 with the rest of the array, because it's the last 1 
in the list. This is technically a unique value because we've checked all the previous ones and we didn't do anything with them. So here we're going to check the one with the four. It's not a duplicate. We check the one with the three. It's not a duplicate. So at this point, although we've seen ones previously, we're not looking at those previous ones. We're looking at just this one with the rest of the array. And in this case, that one is unique. And so therefore, we need to place it into our new array at position two. We now move on to position five, the value four. We check it with the rest of the array, which is only one value to check. And then you find that the four has no um, value that's the same as three. So therefore they are unique. So we add the four to the new array. Now remember I told you that that loop, the initial loop, the red value, the red block goes from the first element to the second last element. We are currently at the second last element. So therefore this looping structure, this process, this part of the algorithm will stop. And once that loop has done, we now are only left with that final value in the array. Now, because there's no rest of the array to compare it to, it will always be unique. I know we had a three earlier in the array, but we didn't, we found a duplicate for it. So we ignored it. So yeah, we found the last occurrence of that three. So we can't check it with the rest of the array. So we simply are going to always, in every case, you will add the last element to the array because it will always be unique. Whether it contained duplicates early or not, it will always be unique because the earlier versions of that number, we did nothing with it. And in that case, you will see that our array at the bottom there is a array that contains only unique values of the array. It only has one one, it only has one three, and then obviously the two and the four, which were originally unique. Now let's see if we can apply that algorithm to a, an example here where we actually have Delphi code. And I have a little example here where we're going to display the array. We're going to use the same values that we had in the example that we showed earlier. And then we're going to remove the duplicates and see how it looks. But before we do that, let's have a look at the code. So first of all, let's just double check at the arrays that we are going to use. Here we have array main, which has 10 spaces available but we've only put in the first six values i've just made the leftover ones a zero but there are initially the six values that we want to refer to in the array main and this variable over here main size tells us how many elements are in that array then the array that we're going to put the values that are unique is the array no dupes so this is going to be the array that we use to store the unique values you normally want to make it the same size as your, your array that you're comparing with because there is a possibility that you have your, your array main contains no duplicates. In that case, you will be storing every single number that's in it in the array new dupes. And if it's full, then this one will also be full. But in this case, we say from 1 to 10, it's exactly the same as that array. And we have a variable called R no dupe size. This will be the variable that tells us how many values are currently in the array no dupes. In this case, there are no values. We've stored nothing in this array. So that's why it's defaulted to a zero. So as just reminds of array main, that contains our values. They are the six values that we're going to go through and remove duplicates and put those unique values into array no dupes. Now just to double check, we've got a, pro, uh, a little button here. And what this button is doing is simply displaying the values in the main array. I'm just going to run it so we can see what it looks like. I've already done the code. So over here, when it runs, there we go. So as you can see, exactly like we had in our initial example, at position one, there's a one, at position two, there's a three, at position three, there's a two, at position four, there's a one, at position five, a four, and at position six, a three. You can see that there's a duplicate one and a duplicate three. Now, if I click on this button, this will display the no dupes array. Because I haven't run the remove duplicates button, there should be nothing to display because there's no values in that array. You can see there's nothing in that array to display. We haven't run the array duplicates. So let's actually look at the code for array duplicates. So let's have a look. So remember we said our initial array, our initial loop through the array started from the first element and went till the second last element. So we're dealing with array main. So we start at the first element and we go to the second last element. Now we know that there are currently our main size elements in 
that main array. So we go to the second last one, which is just minus one, one before it. So that's why we go from one till the, and I've written a little note over here, till the second element, or second last element actually, second last element in the array. I don't know why I said second. Okay. So that's what we're doing. Now, we are now going to have a loop inside of this loop. Now, you could use a for loop, but you would have noticed in the example, at some point we stop doing the loop. Whenever you find a duplicate, there's no point in looking any further. So we're not going to use a for loop in this case. We're going to use a while loop. And there are two reasons why we would stop looping you, the second loop. Remember, this is the loop that we're checking the rest of the array. So there's two reasons. The moment we found a duplicate, so we're going to have this variable here, this Boolean variable, b dupe, we're going to say when it is false, we keep looking. The moment we find a duplicate, b dupe will be true. So while it's false, keep looking. But the moment we find a duplicate, stop looking because we don't need to look any further. So that's why we initialize it to false and we're going to keep it false. The moment we find a duplicate, we'll set it to true. But that's not the only time we stop. When we reach the end of the array, now we don't have a looping variable in a while loop like you do in a for loop. So we have to create some sort of looping variable that's going to go one, two, three. Well, in this case, we are always going to go from one after the k value. So if we were looking at position one in the array, where if k is a one, we are going to look at the values in position 2 to the end of the array. In this case, from 2 to 6. If we were looking at position 2, if this k would move to a 2, we would look from position 3 to 6. So that's why our looping variable starts at 1 after whatever k is. So when it's a 1, it starts at 2. If it's a 2, it starts at 3, and so on. And it will continue to increase. You'll see we increase our check. Um, so that it goes a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, and we will stop either when we find a duplicate or when our check is um, equal or has gone beyond the last value in the main array. So while our check is less than equal to the our main size, in other words, it's less than 6, and it's equal to 6, we will keep checking those values because they're values to check. But when it gets to 7, there's no other value to check, so we can stop looking. So our while loop says, while we have are less than the our main size, in other words, our loop, our initial looping variable here is less than our main size, which means we haven't reached the end of the array. And while we haven't found any duplicates, keep looking. And this is what we are going to be doing in the while loop. So we are going to be checking the k variable, which is that's the, the initial one the loop that we do. If you remember from the diagram, it's the value in red in the red block. Array main k would be the value in the red block, and we check it if it is equal to the same array, array main, but the r check variable. So if k is a 1, we're going to be checking array main 2, and then array main 3, and then array main 4. The k will stay constant at a 1 for this entire loop, and we will check all those values. The moment we find something that equals, the moment, this is when we find a duplicate, we set be dupe to true, which means we have found a duplicate. If we haven't found a duplicate, then we just increase our check, which, which means we didn't find one at position two, so we check into position three, then at position four. But the moment we find one, B dupe will be true, this loop will stop. Okay, and then when it stops, it will come back up here and go to k equal to two, and we will then check our main two with position three and then four and then five and then six if we find a duplicate it'll set it to true and it'll stop otherwise it'll move to the next one now if this loop continues and we get to the end of the loop and the loop stops we're just going to double check if if b dupe is still a false after we've done this check which in other words if we manage to check each and every value and we stopped at the last value and we still did not find a duplicate, then this would never have occurred. It would never have changed to true. So if we get to the end of this while loop and B dupe is still false, then we know that that value is unique. We did not find a matching value for it. So if we find no duplicates of that value, of the element, then you add it to the array no dupes. And the way you do it is the recommendation whenever you add in to array, you first increase 
the size of that array. So at the moment it would be a zero. So we increase it. So it's now opposite. It's a. It's got a one. The number of elements in it is a one. You first increase the number of elements, and then in that position, at position one, you're going to put the value of array main k. So the the red block that we were checking. So that if that one or two or three or whatever, if we found that there was no duplicates, then that value gets put into position one of the array no dupes at that position. Then when we find the second duplicate or second value that's unique, sorry, then you will increase that to a two and in position two you will put that value. And then when we find another value that's unique, we increase it to a three and we put that value into position three. And so that is the whole looping structure. If I go up a bit, that's the whole looping structure to go from the first element to the second last element. Now remember it goes to the second last element because the last element we know will always be unique because there will be nothing to check with it. So the last element always gets added. So once we've finished that whole looping structure, this is right at the end after all the loops have been completed, then you simply increase our no dupe size for the last time. And then in that position you put our main size of array main. In other words, put the last value. So if this is a, if there are six elements in the array, you are putting the sixth element into array no dupes, which is the last element. So that is the code for removing duplicates. So just to remind ourselves, you first have your loop. This is basically the loop over here that goes from the first to the second last element. We check each and every element with the rest of the array. The moment you find a duplicate, we set B dupe to true. So if we get to the end and we haven't set it to true, that means we found a unique value and you increase our no dupe size and you add it at that position. And then the final step is to put the last element into the array because it will always be unique, the last one. So let's run it and see if it works. When it finally runs. And yeah, we've got our code. So let's display a main range. So we know what it looks like. We know that array dupes or array no dupes contains nothing. Now I'm going to click on remove duplicates. Now I should have had some sort of box that pops up to say, give me some sort of feedback that it's done. But I clicked on it. So let's hope it works. And now if I click on array no dupes, you'll see that there are only four elements and it created the two, the one, the four, the three. So now we know that it works. I hope this video has been useful and you've learned how to remove duplicates from an array. Um, if you want to find more videos on arrays and other content with regard to Delphi, you're welcome to go to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash user slash Mr. Long Education. There are lots of IT and a few cat videos there. Um, you can go like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and um, even we have a little website that we're trying to run. We do I try to update it, but um, you can check out all the videos there as well. So go to the website and remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.